And so if you're telling yourself, oh yeah, but I'm just a perfectionist, you're full of shit. You are. Failing at something is better than doing nothing. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to get more shit done. And we're gonna talk about how to live your life one step at a time. Because all too often, I see so many people out there, and let me know if this is you, say yes in your head if this is you, where you want to create an amazing life. You wanna do all of these beautiful things. You wanna do some amazing things for the world, for yourself, for your family, make a ton of money, but you overthink too much and you're paralyzed by all of the things that you have to do in order to get there. So we can see this entire life that we want to create that's 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, the amazing things we want to do, the money we want to make, all of this stuff. But then we start thinking about every single step that we have to take to get there and it's paralyzing. Is that you? Have you ever done that before? It's called paralysis by analysis. Have you ever had paralysis by analysis? If you have, this episode is definitely going to help you because all too often we think about all those things that we need to do. And because there's so many things over the next 10 or 20 years that we need to do, it makes us do absolutely nothing. So instead of taking a step in the right direction of the future that we want to create, what do we do? We do nothing. And I'm going to give you a real quick example before I start giving you some tips on this. Imagine that you sit down for a really nice dinner. Your wife or your husband or spouse or someone that you love creates a beautiful, amazing dinner. They put it down in front of you. You look at it and it's an entire plate of all this amazing food, your favorite food in the world. You don't take that entire plate and try to force the entire plate into your mouth at one time, do you? Wouldn't that be awkward if you sat down and someone tried to put their entire plate of food in their mouth at one moment? You don't get anxiety, anxiety about how many bites you need to take in order to eat that plate, do you? No, of course not. Why? Because you've sat down for dinner before. You realize what it takes. You don't focus and get anxiety around how many bites you need to take. You don't get anxiety about how many chews you need to chew. Because if you thought about how many, I mean, how many times do you actually chew in a dinner? A thousand, a couple thousand? That's a lot of chews. What if you thought about every single one of them? No, you don't do that because you've done this so many times. You've eaten so many plates of food in your life. You understand that in order to finish a plate, you've got to take one bite. You pick up one piece of food, you take that piece of food and you put that piece of food in your mouth and then you chew it. And when you're done with that piece of food, then you can go on to the next piece of food. And eventually, if you do this for a little while, what happens? You're done. It's that simple. Now, you might be like, no sh of course, because literally the same way that you eat food is the exact same way that you should work towards the life that you want. You can't take the entire plate and force it in your mouth. You've got to go one bite at a time, one chew at a time once you get into those bites. That's exactly how your life is as well. Why is it any different? There's a couple of reasons why it's, it's different. Number one, people tend to look at the life that they want and they make it out to be way bigger than it actually is. Like not, not the life that they want, but the actual steps that it takes to get there. We think it is way too big for us to process all of the things that we need to do. And so we decide, you know what, I'd rather just do nothing because thinking about all of the things and all of the processes and all of the things that have to be in place is just way too stressful, right? So we make it to be way more steps than it is. We make it to be, make it to be way more stressful than it is. It doesn't need to be as stressful as it is. We act like we have to struggle our way to success. And in reality, you don't have to. So that's the first reason why. And the second reason why is because a lot of us have never done it. A lot of people out here that are listening to me right now, you haven't created the life that you want. You haven't made the money that you want. You haven't impacted the lives that you want. And because of the fact that you haven't done it, there is fear around all of the stuff that you need to do. Same way that if I, you had never eaten a plate of food and I put a massive plate of food in front of you, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed. But then you realize, oh, it's just one bite at a time. I'll give you another really quick example before I dive into it. But here's, here's really what it is. You know, this is the way I want you to live your life. And I want you to live your life through this example. I live in Austin, Texas right now. I have a really good friend, Mike, that lives in Houston, Texas. This is a true story I do. When I get in my car, let's say it's 8 p.m. at night. I'm going to drive to Mike's house. It takes about two and a half hours to get to his place, right? When I get in my car at night, I can't physically see Mike's house in Houston. I can't see five miles ahead of me. I can't see 10 miles ahead of me. I can't see all of the steps that I need. I can't see every single 
car that I need to pass, every single house I need to pass, every single gas station that goes by, every single mile, I can't see all of those things. When you get into your car at night, you can't see the entire destination. But what do you do? You get into your car, let's say it's a place that you don't really know how to get to. You put in the GPS in your phone and your phone goes, okay, Rob is in Austin, Texas right now. He's trying to get to Houston, Texas. The GPS is gonna tell you every single step that you need to take in order to get to the where you need to be. That's kind of how your goals are. Your goals are like the GPS. I know where I am now. I know where I'm trying to get to, right? I know where I am now. I know I'm trying to get to. Here's all of the routes to get there. Now, could there be a possibility that on your way from Austin, Texas to Houston, I don't know that there could be a crash, that there could be construction, that could be some form of detour? Absolutely. But when that happens, you don't get stressed out about the detour. You don't get stressed out about the crash. You go, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to have to go another route. And then what do you do? You tell Google Maps, you tell Waze, hey, take me a different way. Let's find a detour. Let's find a different route. Are there going to be detours on the way? Possibly. Yeah. When I sit down and I plan out my perfect life, <clears throat> excuse me, and I plan out my perfect life of everything that I want. It's kind of like going, I'm in Austin, Texas now. I'm trying to get to Houston. Houston is my goal. That's what I'm trying to create my life to be. Okay. Now I'm going to go from here to here. And this is what the next 10 years might look like. But if I get into year three, is there a chance that there could be some form of a detour? Yeah. Is there a chance that there could be some crash? There could be something that happens ahead of me that I'm not necessarily anticipating. Yes, absolutely. But once again, if we go back to the, to the getting in my car at night, the way that I want you to live your life is the same way that you drive a car at night. When I get in my car and I turn my lights on, the only thing that I can see is the next 50 feet in front of me. I can't really see that far past that, right? My, my headlights are maybe lighting up a little bit more than 50 feet, but let's just say it's 50. I can only see the next 50 feet in front of me. So what do I do? I drive my truck the best that I possibly can in the lanes, on the, the, the destination, or on the way to the destination, in the direction of that destination, and I focus on those 50 feet then what do I do? Once I get past those 50 feet, my headlights are now lighting up a new 50 feet in front of me. And I focus on how I can drive my car the best that I possibly can the next 50 feet. And then I drive the next 50 feet and the next 50 feet. And if I do this over and over and over and over again, eventually two and a half hours later, I'm going to end up at my friend's house in Houston because I followed my GPS and I focus on the next 50 feet in front of me. So that's how you should live your life. You want to have goals of where you're going, what you're trying to create, of course. And you want to put a little bit of process in there and hopefully it's going to go that way, but I guarantee you it's going to change. There's going to be crashes. There's going to be detours. All of that stuff is going to happen. But then you go, okay, now what do I do? I can only see the next 50 feet in front of me, which means today, you can only focus on today. In fact, you can only focus on this one present moment, which is the next 50 feet in front of you, the next 15 minutes. What do I do the next 15 minutes to drive me closer to my goal? It's that simple. You have to live your life like you're living your life in the headlights. That's it. Same way that you eat food, one bite at a time, one chew at a time. Same way that you drive your car, 50 feet at a time, 50 feet at a time. So why do we make our lives, the success, the money, the happiness, the joy, the peace, everything that we want in our life so freaking difficult? I don't know. Possibly because of the fact that we're so afraid to get out of our comfort zones that we just make up a bunch of, make up a bunch of BS along the way so that we stay inside of our comfort zone. You can only focus on today. You can only focus on the next 15 minutes. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but you can't focus on step number 4,715 until you take step number one. In fact, you can't even take step number two until you've taken the first step. And so your job is to look down at your feet and to go, okay, what's the next step? The worst thing that I could do is nothing. The best thing that I could do is go and do something. Even if I fail, failing at something is better than doing nothing. Failing at something is better than not taking a step in the direction that I want to go in my life. And so if you're listening to this, I want you to ask yourself, be really real with yourself. 
Have you been too paralyzed because you've been making up too much stuff that you don't need to focus on? Have you been thinking too far in the future? All you have to do is sit down and say, what do I need to do with the next 15 minutes of my life to get me closer to my goals? A couple episodes ago, you heard Dean and I say it, is what I'm doing right now getting me closer to or further from my goals? Simple. Journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. What is your next step that you need to take? Just focus on what is the next best step that is in line with the direction you're trying to go in your, your life. And here's the thing that, that might be stressful as well. So many people are so stressed out about just making sure they get it right. So they don't take a step because they're not sure if it's the right step and they don't want to misstep. No, I would rather you fall on your face trying to take that step versus not taking the step. One of my managers used to always say this to us. I don't think I'll ever forget it. He used to always say, you're either green and growing or brown and dying. If you're moving in the direction of the goals, of the life that you want, you are green and growing. If you're not doing anything, you're brown and dying. The way I always think of it is like a stagnant pond. If I'm not moving and doing something and working towards the life that I want, even if it's just working towards the peace that I want, which means more meditation in my life, I am like a, I'm stagnant. And I use the word stagnant on purpose because if I think of a stagnant pond, I think of how gross a stagnant pond is. Just a pond that's not moving, that's dirty, it's got the film over top of it, maybe it's got a bunch of flies, it smells bad. I don't want to see my life as stagnant like that stagnant pond. Because I'm either green and growing or brown and dying. I'm either moving in the direction of my dreams and my goals or I'm staying paralyzed. Here's the thing that's interesting about it. No matter what you do, time will pass anyways, right? No matter what you do, time will pass. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't stop time. That's one thing that I do know. We will eventually age to whatever our final age is that we're going to get to, you and I. We might as well take the time that we are aging and do something that we love, working towards the goals that we want, working towards the dreams that we want but you'll never get it all right. If you're not taking a step forward because you're trying to get it perfect, you're never gonna get it perfect. There's absolutely no such thing as perfection in this world. And so if you're telling yourself, oh yeah, but I'm just a perfectionist, you're full of sh You are. Do you wanna know why? Because perfectionism doesn't exist. Perfectionism, we all think we're perfectionists, just so you know. But really what perfectionism is, is a mask that you're wearing to cover some fear or insecurity. Let me say that again. The perfectionism that you're hiding behind is a mask of some sort of fear or insecurity that you want you don't want to come in contact with, right? So let's say I'm an artist and I'm painting and I make all of these beautiful paintings, but I never put it on Instagram. I never try to sell it. I never try to create a show for people to see it because it's not quote unquote perfect. It's not perfect yet. How many how many amazing artists or amazing people do you know that, that haven't put their, their work out into the world because it's not perfect yet? It will never be perfect. What they're really afraid of, if I was an artist and I didn't put my art out for people to see in this world, I would actually be really afraid of judgment. That's the fear or insecurity that's hiding that behind that mask. Let me give you an example. The reason why I don't want to put my art out is because I don't want someone to say, oh, that's ugly. Well, I don't want someone to say, oh my gosh, she's charging $2,000 for that. I wouldn't pay $50 for that. Well, I don't want someone to buy it and then return it because they hated it, right? So that perfectionism that I keep telling myself is the real reason why I haven't put my art into the world, whether it's my art, whether it's my music, whether it's my book, whether it's my podcast, whether it's my motivational videos, whether it's my Instagram I'm trying to go, my blog, my vlog, whatever it is that you're trying to grow is because we're afraid that it's not perfect yet and it never will truly be perfect. So we hold ourselves back from the life that we want because we're thinking too much about what if somebody judges me or what if I mess up along the way or what if I take the wrong route? And in reality, it doesn't matter. What really matters is that we should be sitting back and going, what is the direction I want my life to be going in? What is it? And I need to take a step towards that every single day. And I need to live my life every freaking day as if I'm just living in the headlights. I can't see the entire path. I'll never see the entire path. I'm probably going to mess up along the way. I'm probably going to fall on my face. I'm probably going to take a wrong turn. But eventually, I will get to my destination. So the way that you need to live your life is consciously remind yourself, 
The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. What's the next best step for you? You need to live your life in the headlights. You can't see 200 yards in front of you. You have to check just the next 50 feet. And those 50 feet are right now, this present moment. And what are you going to do in the next 15 minutes to get you closer to your goals? And then reassess yourself every hour, every 30 minutes, whatever you need to do. And by asking yourself this question, is what I'm doing right now getting me closer to or further from my goals? If it's getting you closer to your goals, continue on that path. If it's getting you further from your goals, stop right now, readjust, take a detour and start going back, back towards the route that's gonna take you to the life that you want. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. My business that was killing it at the time completely went to crap. I lost all of my money. I was five months behind on my car payment and I was living off of pasta. And I thought to myself, this isn't my life. Like this isn't what my life is going to be. I need to create something of myself.